and I would like you to inform you that the chairmanship has invited Ambassador Erwin Kubesch, Head of Office of the Council of Europe Office in Vienna, to attend today's meeting in line with the relevant rules of procedure. And moreover, I would like to welcome two new colleagues. The, head, the new head of the Austrian delegation, Ambassador Clemens Koya, welcome, as well as the new head of the Italian delegation, Ambassador Alessandro Azzoni. Yeah. Okay. The, the agenda for this meeting has been issued as document pc.gal slash 116 slash 16 ref 1 on 14th of July 2016. Are there any comments on the draft agenda? I see none. Thank you. Wir kommen nun zum this now brings us to the first item of today's agenda. It's a great honor for me to be able to welcome the, the Austrian Minister of Foreign Affairs and future chair of the OICE, Sebastian Kurz, here to the Permanent Council. He'll address us today to say something about the forthcoming OSCE chairmanship in 2017. Thank you, Your Excellency, for being with us today. You have the floor, sir. Chairman, Secretary General, Ambassadors, dear guests, I'm very pleased to be able to be with you here today and I look forward very much to the Austrian OSCE Chairmanship in 2017. As you can probably uh, tell, I belong to a generation which didn't experience the Cold War itself. When the Iron Curtain fell 27 years ago, I was just three years old. So I think you'll bear with me if I say that my memories of that are, well, are limited. But I did certainly pick up the fact that my generation grew up in Europe in a time of hope. And to be honest with you, that was not just the case for me. I think for most of my generation, it was really self-evident to be able to experience freedom, security and stability. And I think I'm not the only one who had the feeling at that time that Europe, that our continent, had found its center. We were all sure that more and more people would come to enjoy freedom, security and stability. But when we look around now, I think we have to admit, if we're honest, that our expectations have not been completely met. We all live today in a time in which you might have the impression that old times and old ways of thinking have returned. We're experiencing once again a block mentality on our continent. We hear lots of mutual accusations which in their nature, in their language and in their tone very often remind us of times past. But it's not just that we are experiencing border disputes and military conflicts but also the increase in radicalization and terrorism and a loss of confidence between the participating states in the OSCE area lead to increasing insecurity and ever greater fears in our society. Thus today people are no longer satisfied with conciliatory statements and resolutions. They want tangible solutions and in my opinion they deserve security and stability. I think that the OSCE has a key role here and can make a crucial contribution. It, it covers 58 states and 1.2 billion people. I think we can all make a contribution to greater security and stability. And it was against just this backdrop that we decided two years ago to apply for the OSCE chairmanship in 2017. We want to work actively in the OSCE 
to make a contribution to ensure that we all have greater security and stability. In my opinion, we are witnessing three central threats today which endanger security and stability and our common values in the OSCE area. First of all, there is a worsening of military disputes, disputes which in the past have already led to death, to destruction and to expulsions, and we ought to work together to taking one step to defusing these conflicts. Secondly, we have the increasing threat to internal security through increased radicalization and terrorism. I think it's important here that we all work together to combat radicalization among young people. And thirdly, we're experiencing an increasing loss of confidence between states in the OSCE area. And precisely in the OSCE area, I think that this loss of confidence is perceptible. I think we need to work together to counteract this loss of confidence. Precisely the outbreak of the conflict in Ukraine has, to my mind, demonstrated this loss of confidence all too clearly. But at the same time, the crisis in Ukraine has made it clear just how crucial the OSCE is. Through its special monitoring mission in the east of Ukraine and the trilateral contract group, the OSCE makes an important contribution to crisis management. In particular, Special Envoy Martin Sajic and Ambassador Apakam deserve special thanks. Solving the conflict in the east of Ukraine on the basis of the Minsk Agreement will continue to be one of the priorities of the Austrian Chairmanship. In so doing, we are backing dialogue and cooperation with a Normandy format is decisive at this point. I should like to thank the German Chairmanship for its great commitment. This applies all the more so to the other existing conflicts in the OSCE area. It was possible to curb again the renewed massive escalation in April in the Gorno Karabakh through the mediation of the Minsk Group and with the practical support of the German Chair and Russia. Yet, here too, we need to continue in dialogue, to take one step closer to a solution. The same thing applies to solving the conflicts in Transnistria and Georgia. Our chairmanship will be open to cooperation with all sides, and I hope that I can count on your support. As well as military conflicts, we should think about the increase in radicalization and terrorism. These are a matter of concern. I'm aware that our eyes are, above all, on Syria and Iraq. But the OSCE area is not a safe haven. More than 10,000 people from the OSCE area have set off to join the IS and are currently fighting in Syria and Iraq. They rape, they murder, and they try to wipe out religious minorities. It's not just the case that we cannot simply stand by and watch when citizens from the OSCE area go and perpetrate inconceivable suffering elsewhere. We must also be aware that when these people return, they pose a huge threat to the security and safety of our society. We've already seen it. The OSCE area today is no longer safe from terrorism either. The chain of terror attacks extends from uh, Kazakhstan to Istanbul, Paris, Brussels to Orlando. So to my mind, it's our common task to combat terror, not just in military terms or through the use of the police, but by taking preventive action. Hence, as the Austrian chairmanship we will put particular priority on combating radicalization and we want in particular to work in a preventive way with young people by holding regional workshops and explain that religion is misused here. 
and come up with a, a counter depiction of the narrative which our young people all too often hear. We want to involve actively our Mediterranean partners in this, so I look forward very much to the conference on the 5th and 6th of October in Vienna, which will address precisely combating terror. Ladies and gentlemen, I think one thing is clear to all of us, there can only be a greater security if there is greater confidence. There can only be sustained security if we work with and not against one another. So the basis for our action must always be observing the rights and dignity of all individuals and fundamental rights. Hence, the OSCE, through its bodies and institutions, in particular through its field missions, has at its disposal a unique set of instruments. In this regard, Odia, the High Commissioner for National Minorities, the representative for freedom of the media and the parliamentary assembly, make an important contribution to protecting and preserving the fundamental values of the OSCE. We must use these instruments well and in a targeted fashion in order to achieve greater cooperation and hence to gain greater confidence. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased and I look forward to our activity in 2017. I'd like very warmly to thank the German Chairmanship for their splendid work and I look forward together with my team, led by Permanent Representative Clemens Koya and the head of the OSCE Task Force, Florian Raunig, as well with our Special Advisor Christian Strohal. Together with them, I look forward to working together with all of you and the OSCE Secretariat. You know, Austria lies in the heart of Europe. We've always had good contact both to the West and to the East. This function as a geographical bridge also motivates us to be a political bridge builder. I look forward to this activity. Thank you in advance for your support and I look forward very much to sound cooperation with all of you. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Vielen Dank, Herr Minister. Ich darf yes, thank you very much, Minister. Might I now ask the press to please leave the room so that we can then resume our deliberations.